psychedelics are illegal not because a loving government is concerned that you may jump out of a third story window psychedelics are illegal because they dissolve opinion structures and culturally laid down models of behavior and information processing they open to us the possibility that everything we know is wrong we don't need new laws that control our consciousness and rigidly place it in a prison cognitive liberty the fact that as adults if we're not hurting anybody else we should have the right to explore the contours of our own consciousness without any mediation or legislation on the part of somebody else reject the authority authority is a lie or is it perception information is power but we have to seize see the opportunity the opportunity the opportunity So, yeah, consider yourselves uh, lucky you get to listen to all about my life. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, when I started this podcast, I kind of, and then I, I started doing some episodes like that, and I, I feel like it has been a while since I really kind of dove in. You know, I've I've touched on certain kind of issues that were going on recently, and I've had some guests on and stuff, and uh I t- took mushrooms and ranted like a lunatic and recorded it and put it up for your enjoyment to uh, laugh at me. So, you know, I'm doing the brave work here. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to get out there in the field, charge, and, uh, you know, take shrapnel and whatever. So I'm here for your for your audio pleasure to uh, report the news, report the news today about uh, Mike Brancatelli. Report, report the Brancatelli report. Uh, I, you know, it's my job, it's my duty as a human being to share my human experience. To you know, we're all like investigative journalists to our own lives, and uh, how often do we really tell everybody everything that's going on? And I think there's something valuable with that because I think that, you know, we are reporting the news of our human experience, right? I mean, that's, if you think of it in that, in that way, and if we, we hold back and we, or we don't really give an accurate representation, then we're essentially all responsible for reporting fake news. Wouldn't, wouldn't that make sense? If we're not really being as open and as honest and as true and as meaningful as we can be and sharing that, then we're not really fully understanding the truth about each other, about our human condition, about our different races and cultures and societies and, and genders and everything. So we're, we're kind of doing a disservice to ourselves by not doing that because by not doing that we we limit the uh, amount of truth that is exposed in society so I you know I, I, I'm a big believer in that and you know that's why I'm going to release this episode today and talk about some personal stuff because I'm a very I'm a big believer in you know obviously freedom of thought right You're, we're listening to this show mind rights uh, as I like to say, you know, the the ability to have freedom of thought so we know what we are and, and who we are and why we're here and what this all means and we can think about it in a variety of different ways and one of those ways is having direct experiences and going through trials and tribulations and coming to our own conclusions about things and kind of, you know, investigating life and what it means to be alive and, and all that kind of stuff from our own perspective, not being 
taught to us by anybody, but us discovering it for ourselves. Obviously, you know, with the assistance of people who have come before us, but really, truly diving in and uh, and investigating that. And um, and then once we gather our thoughts and start communicating them to each other, that is why that's when freedom of speech becomes so important. Because as as Jordan Peterson says, it's you know the logos and is the the the, the speech the is is an act of God to create order out of chaos. You know, the world is chaos, and, and through the language that we create and the symbols that we make and the discourse that we have, we bring about a sense of order to it. And it's that balancing of chaos and order that, like a collective intelligent consciousness, births changes into being. It's the constant negotiation between ourselves in in this thing that we call life. It's the negotiation, it's the debate, it's the struggle, it's the conflict, it's the collaboration and the competition that collectively lifts humanity up and we keep progressing and we keep advancing and we keep making uh, you know, things happen. And so that's that's why we live in a very crucial time right now where these sorts of things are under attack and it's not good. It's it's really not good. You know, this is a very serious matter and um we have so much going on right now in the world. We live in such a globally connected world where we can know about everything all the time and we check our phones 8 hours a day. We spend in total time checking our phones and stuff like that. So we're just so connected and we're so we we just have this information overload this overload of choices and these overload the overload of ideas and the overload of information and access to knowledge and it's just so overwhelming for a lot of people that they just can't be bothered with it and they just tune it all out but that's really like that's the problem though cuz this stuff is just going to keep taking over taking over people's, you know, psyches because it's just too much of a heavy stress with, with all of this, all of this stuff that's out there. Well, you know, the information overload, the, the choice overload, the exposure overload, everybody is, you know, visible all the time. And so it's really, really important that we acknowledge that there's some problems and that we have to participate. And by participating means that, you know, we have to really start not being so fucking stupid. <laughs> I mean, really, that's what it is. But, it, you know, I, I understand how hard that could be because I'm fucking stupid. So I, I totally get it. You know, I do all, I used to be on a show called Part of the Problem. Like, <laughs> definitely part of the problem. But actively aware of it and actively trying to do something about it, but inevitably always kind of failing and feeling bad about it and, you know, being a jerk, being a dick, and then trying to, okay, I have to adjust. But it's that, it's that work, that effort, that adjustment, not to toot my own horn or anything because there's no, no tooting uh, needed or required for that because that's not something to toot about. But it's like, it, it, it's at least I'm... <laughs> At least I'm I'm making an effort, you know, and I think that um that's really what it takes because freedom of thought and freedom of speech come together to collaborate and we collaborate with each other, we compete and collaborate to advance the human race. You know? I mean, get to the next level of a video game. If this was a game and that was our job. It's like you have this consciousness sphere, and you know, of intelligent uh, 
of the intelligent collective psyche or the collective uh, conscious consciousness. Excuse me. And um, like it seems to me that it's just like this, like you know, kind of um, uh, try like this energy, almost like a sun kind of energy or something. I don't know, I'm thinking about the thing from Spider-Man 2 with Doc Ock. He has that, like, ball, and it's, like, shooting energy out. So it's this, like, intelligent sphere of energy of the collective psyche and the collective consciousness, and it's this thing, this powerful thing. It's like a reality creation machine. You know, we, we all have the ability to create our own realities by choosing what we perceive and how we interpret it and how we act in the world and how we speak in the world and, you know, all of that comes down to the choices that we make. And, and those choices come from not giving into fear and not giving into despair. Because I know I've been there, and I'm going to talk about that. But it's, it's not getting crushed by the weight of our current predicament in this life that we live here, in this current time right now. Because it could be overwhelming. You know, you hear people say it all the time. Eh, no politics at the dinner table, you know. Let's talk about anything but religion and politics, okay? Or, you know, you bring something not, like factory farming or something like that. Oh, it's such a bummer, you know. Don't, don't be a bummer. Don't be a downer, that sort of stuff. You know, it's because it's heavy shit that people just don't want to deal with. You know, they'd rather kind of spend this lifetime doing things that are gratifying to them and satisfying to them and make them feel good because... That, I mean, that is kind of what this is all about, you know? But somebody's got to drive the ship. You know, not everybody can, can just be at the, the pool deck partying and, and boozing it up and smoking a joint in the corner. Someone's got to steer this thing. So, you know, but we can all steer it. That's the, the point. The point is that we can all participate in steering it. Because the ship is huge and there's a, you know, we need a lot of captains, I guess. We need a lot of participants. So if we're, you know, if we're, you know, creating our own realities and, and we're, you know, we have these thoughts and we, our thoughts become things because, you know, really when you think about it, and I've, I've talked about this before and, and Jason Silva brings up this point, you know, we are the gods now. Like we are, we are like godlike, you know, and, and Steve Jobs, I think had mentioned this and it was talking about how like if you you look inside of your mind when you think about things and you we have these ideas everything that you uh see around you was invented by somebody by people you know it's everything that that happens you know in this world that we live in is by i mean not everything but you know most things are created by people everything that we see around us the buildings the TVs this microphone that I'm talking into Somebody had an idea, it was in their head, they, they imagined it, and then they decided, okay, how do I make that happen? How do I bring that into being? How do I manifest that? How do I create that? Like, you know, like, like a god. That, this is why I love Rick and Morty so much, because that theme seems to run throughout it. It's like the creating and the creator and the created and that whole thing, and it's like, it's so complex because they ex exist in this multiverse of just infinite everything, infinite Ricks, infinite Mortys, infinite planets, time, spaces, all kinds of stuff. So I, I'd, you know, from, from my experiences, that's a pretty, I think would be a pretty accurate version. It's just so fucking complex. It's, it's impossible for us to grasp and understand because there's just so, there's so much to it. You know, and, and, and then again, everything is true and untrue because it really is our choice and what we choose to believe. You know, we have the ability to dream together, you know, to dream things into being, to dream the, the, the world that we would like to see for ourselves if we are able to get to the point where we have clarity of vision to do that. And that's why I'm a big proponent of psychedelics because I... I believe that they can give you that opportunity to have that clarity of vision, other, among other things, of course. But that was the one that did it for me, so that's why I'm a proponent of it. And, um, you know, because I'm a pretty stubborn person, and 
you know, I think that sometimes you need like a sledgehammer to just crack through your your ego and bring you bring you uh you know, shatter you up a little bit and then try and put you back together. Sometimes it takes a lot to just really get you through. And I think maybe we're at a crucial point in our history right now as a species that we kind of need these like heavy hitters, these these sluggers, you know, to come in and just really just do a number on people and 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 decondition people and wake people up and, and get people to really kind of dive in now because, you know, it's like the le- it's like the end of the movie and the hero is like hanging off the the ledge and he just needs someone to like throw him his his weapon or something and it's like you know we need that we need that we need that that last ditch effort to to make a quick change fast otherwise we're falling off the uh falling off the ledge of the building and then the movie's over and the hero dies but that's not what we're going to do, is it, people? Because that's that's why you listen to this show. You listen to this show for this such such insightful you know, positivity or whatever this is. The the the, the, the rambling thoughts, the thoughts of a madman. That was um the movie Speed, Dennis Hopper. Jack. All right, Wildcat. The ramblings of a madman. A madman. He says, he says something like that. Dennis Hopper, man, he's a fucking legend. If you if you have never seen Blue Velvet, go watch that movie. David Lynch and Dennis Hopper is uh, just a psycho in that movie. Completely just sur- strange, weird. Lynch is, is 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 creepy, man. And Hopper is great in that. That wasn't such a great Hopper impression. I, I think I could do a better one, but we'll save it for another time. But um. Yeah, I just, you know, so so getting back to what I'm I'm talking about here is that you know, it's it's my job to uh report my experience. And I hope what I hope to gain out of that is that I hope that people can listen and and maybe resonate with it and relate to it and maybe it, you know, maybe we can have more of a dialogue and a discussion about some of these things that I think, uh, you know, that I've been struggling with and that maybe other people are as well. And out of that, you know, dialogue and that discussion comes an understanding. And, you know, we get to understand each other more. Instead of being, you know, afraid of each other and scared of each other and paranoid of each other, you know, the Internet has allowed us to see the world and see everybody and see each other. But we, we still don't understand each other. You know, we, we really still have walls up. So we need, everyone needs five dried grams of mushrooms in silent darkness. Report to the conference room right now and get your bag and go home. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, we, we need to have open dialogue and discourse, free thought, free speech, so we can debate, so we can, you know, come together. I mean, look, like, this is inherently what politics is. You know, you can say you don't like politics, you know, I, I, I've, I've definitely become grossed out by it, you know, the current state of it. But essentially, what we're doing right now is politics. You know, we're discussing how we should be and how we should exist and what would the best kind of way for us to live and what are the things that we should care about. And these are the negotiations of a group of people, of a society that, that wishes to see the betterment of humankind and, and share in that with the collective, with each other, with uh, you know, our environment and to try and have, you know, procreate and leave a better world for uh, pieces of us who we will leave behind when we depart. That is, seems to me to be what we should be doing. I mean, you know, then again, it's, you can do whatever the hell you want. You could, you know, you can inject heroin into your eyeballs if you want to. I mean, that's your right, but I wouldn't recommend it. I definitely wouldn't recommend that. Um, you know, although, we, look, I mean, human life is to be experienced, so maybe that's, 
maybe that's an experience that you get to have because it's, you know we're all just each other living different lives. So maybe in in one incarnation you're just like, hey, I'm just gonna shoot up and die at 26. I don't know. Is it maybe that maybe maybe it's just the collective consciousness that's having a subjective experience, and on this go around, it just wants to know what it's like to be that kind of person and have that kind of experience. Because experience is everything. I mean, this is the game. Is experience? This is an experience machine. Someone had an essay about this. Uh, Professor Robert Nozick, I think, came up with this, the experience machine. And he was saying that, like, you know, what is reality, right? Like, what if we, if I built a, a reality machine or an experience machine, I think he called it, and I sat you down in there and I hooked you up and you went in and it was just like real life, what would be the difference? Like, what would be wrong with that? Well, you know, I mean, it, it's like, well, you could say it's not real, but if it feels real and everything seems real, it's, it's this virtual reality experience machine that it's like, man, it's night and day. It's like, you know, you, it's like jump into that DMT realm or something, but you're, but it's like this waking consciousness here. So if you're hooked into a machine and it, and it, and it produces the same experience as this consciousness here, what would you what would be the problem with that or what would be your choice or how would you feel about that if you knew that so it's a very interesting question you know because it just it comes down to this whole thing about how we create our own realities by the thoughts that we think and then the words that we speak and then the discourse that we choose to have with each other or or fear to have with each other you know, so we're all partaking in this, in this massive effort on an individual level. And we, we have to realize, we have to really wake up to the fact that we are part of this human story, that we are co-authoring this, this existence into reality. You know, every thought that we choose to give life to and everything that we speak and put out there or everything that we hold back and don't say or afraid of, or whatever, that limits the, the, the world that we want to see, the world that we wish the world would be like. Your world, the world, the whole thing. It's, it's very similar. There's the, it's, you know, it's almost like there's, there's, it's almost like there's like 20 million simulations like happening at the same time, you know, and it's like, there's all of these levels that are interconnected with each other. And so every one part affects the whole, and the whole affects every one part. And it's, you know, this is, this is, um, this isn't something that I don't think that you can necessarily prove to be true. I don't know. Maybe we have. Maybe we have scientists working on things like this right now. I'm not aware of it, but it's interesting because I think there are limits to science because there's, we, after all, invented the measurements and the rules for science. Everything that we observe and we, you know, we, we come up with these symbols and these meanings and, these, and this language and these formulas, and we conspire together to agree that that's generally what it should be. You know, we, that's, the, that's the necessity of free speech. The necessity of free speech and freedom of thought is that we, we, can, we all will agree on this a version of, of, uh, of reality that works, that makes the most sense, that's the most true. Because when we're expressing ourselves truly and when we're, you know, when we're having, when we have the freedom to think fully and when we have the freedom to speak fully then we bring a more true version of reality into being we manifest a new world by doing that a truer world a world that's more close to our natural ways because we're not holding back we're not suppressing we're not you know um putting restrictions and rules on things we're allowing we're allowing the natural growth of, of humanity to happen just the way it does in the, in the plant world. And I, and I believe that the plants are trying to teach us that message, to teach us the message that we can evolve naturally. 
like they do and like animals do. And we don't need to, you know, we, we have these wonderful minds, but it's, they're, they can, they're, they're a double-edged sword because they're, they're so powerful that we can literally, we can just invent these like reality killing machines because we can, because we're so powerful. But the real challenge is to not go down that path, to limit ourselves and to harness that power and that talent and that energy and that capacity for, for the good, for, for creating a truer, more natural version of what this life is. And a lot of that, um, you know, a lot of that kind of darker energy that wants to build this kind of oppressive machine-like world that's not really, uh, that doesn't really foster natural human growth and healthy human growth, it, it comes from people. I mean, it comes from us. It's, it's a part of us. And it's just some people have gone more down that avenue of, 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 the, of the ex- expanded realm of consciousness. They've, they've chosen to do that because they let the, the, you know, their fear and, and their, um, really their, the fear of our own mortality a lot of times and uh, just a bunch of different things. They just they let that get to them. So that's, that's the, the world that they would like to create. So it's, you know, and then there's, we, we all take part in it because if we don't say anything, if we're complacent about it, if we acquiesce, then it's almost like we're, we're allowing that to happen. We're giving in, we're letting that happen instead of actively taking, you know, taking a stand and participating and choosing to do something that's a little bit more difficult because you're going against that aggressive kind of dominator uh, mentality. but. But ultimately, that is really what we should be striving for. Now, that doesn't mean that like everybody's going to do that. Everybody's going to get that. I mean, it's just, you know, it's so hard to do. It's just so, it's so difficult to do. It's difficult to figure out. I mean, you guys listening to this show, you get this kind of stuff, but... There might be people that have never listened to this show before and they're listening and, and maybe they don't listen to any kind of psychedelic shows or maybe they don't listen to, um, you know, they, they don't read philosophy or I don't know, whatever. They're just not, it's this, this isn't a part of their reality. You know, there's some people that are just, the, a part of their reality is just they go to work and they watch football on the weekends and they go to the gym and they, you know, are married or, or something like that and they just kind of drink beers and play cards and. I don't know, just kind of a little bit more of a, sim- a simpler way of, of living, not so complex, but just in that way. And this might be, I don't know if this is accessible necessarily to to, to uh, someone like that, nor would I think that they would be interested. Um, and that's fine, because not everybody should be, you know, and not everybody wants to be, and, and that's great because people have freedom to choose but the challenge is trying to communicate this sort of message to to people who might who are would be outside of the of this realm of thinking because there's a lot of those people and i think that a lot of our systems a lot of our institutions a lot of the power in our in our society have made it so you don't you know it, it's so massive, it's so big, it's so omnipresent, it has so much control and power over you that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's everywhere, and it seems almost like um, a foregone conclusion. You know, I hear that a lot. You know, I hear people, you know, that's the, con- that's the standard libertarian argument, uh, <laughs> you know, like, without the government, like, who would build the roads? You know, because you're, you're talking about Dissolve, you know, getting rid of a, any sort of thing called government, any, any sort of institution that relies on uh, force and coercion to, uh, to, to get things done. Um, as if, you know, we need to force people to do things. Like, I, I just don't, 
I don't think that that's the answer ever. I don't think the answer is ever forcing anybody to do something or shaming anybody because they don't know something or, um, you know, looking down on people. And, you know, we're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it, of course. But it's really, you know, you got to try not to do that because you have to remember that not everybody, there's so much out there. There's so much to know. There's so many different, you know, channels of reality to tune into and to be a part of. There's so many different, you know, movies to play the part in. You know, we can't play the part in all of them. So I don't blame people for for that, you know. I mean, I, I sure was someone like that. So I, cu- I couldn't blame anyone for that. You know, it's like I didn't give a shit. I didn't care. Lazy and, you know, just cared about myself. And, you know, I, mean, I think it, it's easy to do that. Like I said, these, these massive institutions, these, these, this massive control and, and power in our lives, you know, make it so we don't really have to be involved. You know, every four years we vote or whatever. I, I don't, but people do. And look where that got you, huh? Look at where voting got you. See? What'd I tell you? It's all, it's all a sham. It's all rigged. I mean, but it doesn't really matter who's president anyway because it's just the, the power, the system of power is there. The, the, our belief in the... Uh, our belief that we have to, that this, this thing called government that relies on force and coercion to, you know, be the authority figures in our lives, it's our belief in that we, it's our belief that we need something like that, you know, to exist, to live, to get along with each other, to be nice to each other, to share, to care, to, you know, it, it, I would argue that it's actually, it actually does the opposite because People think, oh, the government will do it. I'm sure the government's taking care of something. I don't know. There's some program. There's some institution. Ah, oh, what do I pay all these tax dollars for? I'm not giving it any charity. I give enough. You know, that kind of stuff. And it's true. You know, there's, it's, it's, it's true. And these government bureaucracies, they're not, they're not uh, you know, they're not incentivized to produce and and things like that so you know we have these ideas democracy and and we have these ideas government and they're all just ideas they're just ideas and these are just kind of sort of like you know the the best ideas that we've had so far and the ones that have kind of risen to the top and you know they've worked out for a while and you know it's really fucking hard to shift the paradigm and shift the narrative and change these these big things but it takes time it just takes time it takes chipping away and it takes just constant work from people who are interested in this sort of thing and then obviously the leaders of the movement of of change you know the people that are really active that are out there you know on the front lines you know they're writing books they're publishing articles they're doing you know they're giving talks they're lecturing they're teaching they're professors they're they're, you know, they're just, I'm leaving out a bunch of things, but they're really making a real change with their talents and their skills at a very high level. And, you know, not all, all of us could do that because we just don't have those kinds of talents and skills, but we can participate in our own ways. And we can participate in our own ways to, to collaborate together to um, come up with new ideas. But the only way that we do that is by making sure that Free speech is upheld. No matter how shitty the ideas are, they got to be heard and debated and refuted and, dis- and, and, are, you know, and, and contended. And, com- and there's got to be, you know, war. That's where war should be. Not in, you know, killing and all that stuff. That's primitive. That's barbaric. That's savage. We, we need to ev- evolve to a higher state of consciousness so we can have respect and tolerance for each other so we can debate shitty, terrible, repugnant, horrible ideas so they can get smacked down in public and so everybody knows. You know, just like, hey, did you see that fight? Like, yeah, dude, that guy, he, he got knocked out. That was crazy. You know, or the, the Mayweather-McGregor fight. Everyone saw that, right? Like, you talk about that. Like, let's have f- idea fights. So we can see, you know, what the best ideas are because this is how we communicate our human experience to each other. We, 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 we're the investigative journalists of the human experience that is called us 
and we're reporting on the facts of the day every day, every time we choose to talk, every time we choose to say something, every time we choose not to say something, every time we choose to, you know, take an attitude for the day, you know, like we're gonna, this is going to be a good day, a shitty day, whatever, whatever kind of mental mind frame that we, we get ourselves in, hiding it, suppressing it, you know, all this stuff, it, get it out there, talk to people. You know, put it out there. And in our society doesn't make it easy to do that. We're all supposed to just be productive, you know, uh, hustlers, you know, get out there and go, you know, work. You get two weeks vacation. You're working every day. You're out there. You're alert. You're alert. You're focused. You're ready. You get your coffee. Go. You get your energy drinks. Give me an Adderall. Da, 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 da. I mean, this is just, it's too much. We're not designed for this. We're not robots, you know. Let the robots take over. Let us relax. I mean, the goal of humanity should be to increase leisure time, you know, and it, to make things more efficient and easier. And, you know, nowadays it just seems like we're, we're working more hours than ever. We're in these offices. We're, you know, there, our ancestors must have been like, what the hell are you guys doing? You know, we're in these crazy steel buildings. We're so disconnected from each other. We're, 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 we have all this social media, but we're lonelier than ever. We're depressed. People are committing suicide. You know, 22 veterans a, a day kill themselves. You know, we, there's, there's in, you know, depression is running rampant. And that's what I want to talk about. And, and, you know, there's just diabetes, like 70% of the population is like pre-diabetic or something. I mean, everything just seems to be like we're living in this like bizarro world where there's just, it's like we're, we're beating ourselves up. We're against humanity and we're doing it to ourselves. We're doing it to the world. We're doing it to each other. Each one of us is making a choice to participate in playing that game because that game has been going on for a long time and the power centers of that game set the tone for reality because they're the dominant ones that have all the weapons and they're, and they're the ones that have all the power and the money. And they, they say, this is the way the game is played. If you play the game the way that we play it, we'll reward you. If you don't, then, you know, tough luck, buddy. Hope, hopefully you'll have a better incarnation next go around because you're going to suffer on this one. You know, and that's just, I think that's just where a lot of our, our ailments come from. You know, you go to these indigenous tribes and, and these people down in, in, you know, I've only spent, given I've only spent like two weeks down there, but I felt it, I mean, immediately. I mean, these people know how to live life. There, there's an ease about them, and there's a, there's a, a real presentness about them. They really live in the moment. They really do. And I had Hamilton Souther on this podcast, and I think this is the second time that I brought him up in a recent podcast, but that guy drops so much knowledge that it's hard to not bring him up. And he was talking about, you know, look, it's like we have all these things in our society. People are worried. They're, they're anxious, all this stuff. You know, they're not like that down in the rainforest. In the rainforest, they're, you know, the, if they see a snake, they, they go around it. You know, you, you would think that in our Western mind, we would think, well, they must be yeah, living in the jungle. That's crazy. There's all, all kinds of animals and bugs and this and that. And oh, it rains. And what do you do? And where's the food? And, uh, and these people are just, they're living. And they're like, oh, okay. If there's, yeah, if there's a snake over there, we'll just go that way. Or like, yep, yeah, we'll, we'll be prepared to, you know, we'll be prepared to, to handle the, the challenge when, it, when we see it. We're not going to run around stressed about, oh my God, there's snakes. There's snakes in the forest. There's snakes in the forest. I mean, what kind of sense would that make? But that's what we do here. You know, we do that here because we think that the, the material mind, the scientific mind, the logical, rational, tangible mind we want to touch everything and build everything. We want everything to be real. You know, it's got to be real. That that kind of cold, materialistic, scientific, uh, materialist approach, it, 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 you know, yeah, it's it's like saying like, look at look at look at this amazing, you know, laser beam I I, I built. I'm going to use it to blow up the moon. <laughs> why are you going to do that? Oh, because that's what it does. It's a moon blower upper. But why would you? Because, because. You know, it's because I'm, I'm more powerful than God. That's why. I decided to build a, a moon blower upper laser. And, uh, and, I, and I did it because, to, 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 because I said, fuck you for creating me. 
and I didn't ask to be created, and this is your punishment. God, I'm going to show you that I'm more powerful than you by blowing up more of your creations. I think that's really what it is. I mean, it seems like that to me. This defiance, you know, this defiance of, of being. You know, why did you bring me into this world? I brought up Rick and Morty before. They talk about that on the show all the time. Uh, one of the, the, the teeny verse episode, Rick creates a teeny verse and he, they, they power his battery in his spaceship and they're horrified to, to find this out. You know, like, he's like, yeah, I didn't ask to be created. And, the, and Rick, in another episode, creates a little machine and the machine says, what is my purpose? And he says, your purpose is, <clears throat> your purpose is you <clears throat> get butter. <laughs> All right, Morty. Your, he goes, your purpose is you get butter. And the machine goes, oh, my God. You know, because it's like, it's like this horrifying, like, realization that we're the, you know, Ernest Becker says this, that we're these beings that can, can do all these things with our mind and we can ponder the infinite and the cosmos and we can come up with all these, these symbols and these meanings and we can build all these tools and these gadgets and these gizmos and we can search the ends of the earth and we can you know, build all these ships and we can have these museums where we house all these things and we build all these structures and we have, write them in the books and we leave legacies and we're here, we were here, we lived, you know, because it's like this... It, 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 because we we ultimately have this realization that we are we are just sacks of meat with hair that fart and shit and piss and liquid comes out and there's all these weird you know globbly <laughs> parts inside of us these 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 you know like gelatinous tubes and things that are you know beating and cells moving around all this weird stuff that's going on inside of us and ultimately, we're just going to be in the dirt, and worms are just going to be eating us. You know, he says that we're, we're, we're ultimately food for worms. So it's this kind of like sick joke almost. I mean, you can interpret it that way, you know. You can interpret it as, as that and, and say, my God, you know, why? Why curse us with this ability to do all these wonderful things, but only to have us perish and, and be nothing. It seems like such a frightening thing sometimes, you know? But that's not, like, that's not something that we should be worrying about. <laughs> because that's just, like, what's going to happen. And, you know, we should maybe try and come up with technology to see if we can extend our life or... Cure death, you know, cure death, as uh, Aubrey de Grey uh, says. Um, cure the disease. The number one disease that's killing people is death. <laughs> I kind of like that. The number one disease killing people is death. Yeah, sure. So yeah, have some kind of you know birth. Have that collective massive intelligent consciousness. You know, shoot out a firestorm and birth a couple people that'll take part in having the experience of trying to conquer death by inventing technology or something like that. Do it. Why not? That's an experience too. You know, that's that's a node of our collective consciousness as well. You know, shooting out and, and experiencing. You know, that version, that infinite possibility. So we're just, you know, living in these infinite possibilities. So, you know, we're re reporting on the news of the day. We're, we're, we're talking about our lives. We're experiencing our lives. We're thinking about our lives. Ah, does that person like me? Ah, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Fuck, I kind of was being a dick there. Oh, boy. I really lost my temper. I got out of control. That was pretty bad, you know. Holy shit. Oh, fuck this asshole. Uh, you know, all these thoughts and, and oh, I, should, I shouldn't be that way. Uh, maybe I should be this way. Oh, I, I shouldn't. You know, it's just all of, the, all of these things that are going on in this, in this, you know, experience that we're having, you know, from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep to the, to the moment that we dream and we have dreams and then we, you know, remember those dreams. Oh, that was kind of weird. What did that happen? Oh, okay. 
you know, but it all informs who we are. And who we are is, you know, who we are is special. <laughs> it is, though. I mean, it fucking is. So fuck you. It is. You are all special snowflakes. No, you're, you, you, but you all ha- are, are very powerful because you, we're all experiencing something unique to ourselves, you know, because there's so many unique experiences. I remember the movie Garden State, like Natalie Portman says something like, uh, she's like her and Zach Braff are having like a weird, flaky, like zoned out hippie moment in her room. And she's like, oh, I've, no one's ever done this before. Bleh, and like made like a face. No one's ever done this before. And like, you know, she's, it's like kind of a cheesy scene, but she's right. You know, it's like, there's, we're all having these individual unique experiences and they're all different. They're, none of them are exactly the same. And, you know, it's, if we're reporting these experiences to each other, we're, we're having that negotiation. We have free speech, we have free thought, and we're having that negotiation. So we're building this, this more true, more, more, uh, this, this world that's, that's more true and that, you know, that we understand more and that we can relate to more and that serves us more rather than us serving it, you know, us serving the, the mental master, the mind, you know, it, it, it should be this, this harmony, this process of mind, body, spirit, soul, and everything coming together to really make, you know, informed decisions about things. And we have, we have left out that element of the intangible, of the of the spiritual, of the, you know, transcendental, the, you know, the, the stuff, the things that you can't touch, the, the intuitions, the, 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 the gut feeling, the, the, um, the choice to entertain in something that could possibly be a delusion, but is a fun one, uh, a fantasy that, that we all can agree on, that we can, uh, make, you know, mandatory, Coachella uh, and Burning Man or whatever, like, you know, national holidays, like seven times a year or something, whatever, something crazy. Go, why not? You know, I'm sure there's something out there that we could all agree upon. Oh, yeah, sure. That would be great if that happened. Hey, no taxes tomorrow. Hey, that, that would be fucking great. You know, I mean, I think we can all uh, figure there's an, there's an ideal world that's out there and it's all for the taking for us. Right now, we just have to be able to make that choice. But, you know, like I said, you know, there's the, there's the people that don't even know that there is a choice. So, you know, what do you do then? Well, nothing, really. You just keep, we just keep doing this, and the people that get it go on, and it's just this kind of, you know, little battle over time. But there is, uh, you know, there's a, there's a need to get more people involved, and because... The more people that are involved in trying to work together to improve themselves and create a better reality for themselves, and in turn, that reality creates a better experience for everyone else, then, you know, we're enjoying this life more. We're having more fun. We're having better opportunities. We're not as stressed. We're not as depressed. We're not as sick. We're not as angry. We're not as miserable. We're not as overworked. You know, they're, they're, what I'm saying here is there's a better way. And I think a lot of people get stuck and not knowing that there's a better way. And, and that's because we live in a world that doesn't offer uh, the opportunity for truth to be exposed. And so we can create a better reality so that the elders of the civilization, the community, the society, the, the town, the, the, the elders of the group can pass down a more true version of reality, a better version of reality, and a reality that works more for people rather than, you know, saying, hey, they, we got screwed, you're getting screwed, you know, we're not going to, you know. So I think that it's up to, it's really up to our generation, you know, this uh, millennials, ah, millennial, ah, millennials are lazy, ah, millennials don't like things that we like. You know, that, that's, that's, that, that is... Another very important thing, you know, to talk about right here in this in this moment of of what I was just kind of getting to, and that is because we have an opportunity to like you know break the wheel. We do. We have an opportunity to change the game, and it's because that our level of intelligence, our level of awareness, our uh, level of of reality creation and perceived reality is f- increased. That so we have 
f- surpassed uh, the the levels that our parents' generation has in by leaps and bounds because of the exponential change of technology. It has, you know, we, this technology has kind of birthed uh, a new awakening in us by having access to Terrence McKenna videos on YouTube and Alan Watts videos on YouTube and and you know things for so for dumb people like me who didn't really read and th- and and wasn't really concerned about stuff could easily watch a video of Alan Watts talking and then easily f- you know go online and google you know what he was talking about and then find uh an, an article about something else that linked to something else and now all of a sudden I'm looking at something about the Harvard uh, psychedelic guys, Tim Leary and Richard Alpert, and then he became Ramdas, and then I find out that Ramdas has all these books, and then there's this great t- thing called Audible, and then I can listen to them, and he talks, and they're enjoyable, and I'm learning more, and it just goes on and on and on in this spiral of investigation into reality, investigation into truth, investigation into different nodes of consciousness where that were awake and that were communicating their experience at their time, which has informed and shed light on the greater experience as a whole and is now resonating and communicating with me. And now I'm waking up and I'm figuring things out and I have questions and I'm researching and reading and learning more. And now I'm talking about it. And so it, it, it really is, you know, so crucial that we have this ability, this freedom, this technology, and that we, we should be lucky that we're the first generation to really come up with this and the the generation and it's our responsibility for our generation because we are in you know taking over the you know becoming you know we're becoming older and and we're getting you know more in control of 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 things it's our it's our really our duty to make sure that we do the right thing and we do the right thing for the next generation of of kids that are behind us who have grown even faster and more exponentially than we have when we were coming up. My one-and-a-half-year-old nephew plays with an iPad. He knows how to work it. He knows how to turn it on. He knows what the buttons do. I mean, it is crazy. So it would be a disservice to humanity to keep us in the dark and to not speak truth into being and to not... uh, try and do whatever we can to understand each other so that we can create a better version of reality so that we can have a better human experience for ourselves who are living different lives and experiencing those different lives. And when I say that, I mean that. I mean, we are all made of the same thing. We are just living different. We are just having different experiences. We're different players in the same game, but we're all made of the same thing. And we're all just experiencing this life in that way. I mean, that that's not to say that, you know, I'm you and you're me and, you know, I can slap you in the face or something like that. That's, that's ridiculous. But what I mean is that essential life force, that, 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 that coming on to consciousness, that, that ability to beat, that ability to be you and see the world through your eyes. Well, I have that too. I'm just doing it from this perspective. And so that's what makes this whole thing so fun because there's just such a limitless, there's it's just the possibilities are limitless and there's so many different people and they're unique and it's fun and it's creative. So that's, you know, there's really a positive message in there as well that we can really choose to believe in that. And that's a way more enjoyable way to go about living, in my opinion, because, um, you know, it's, it, you're, you're reducing the amount of stress and fear and tension in your life and you're embracing and accepting, you know, what you are and what it means to be alive and, and, uh, and, and the, the, the power that you have and the ability to uh, use that power to bring things into being that you would like to see. And, I, and, and you know, obviously, we, we hope it's, you know, good things, you know, obviously, because there's people that, you know, there's... I remember when that fucking movie The Secret came out. They're like, it's a secret. All of the greatest men in history have known it for all time. And now I'm telling you. And it's like, yeah, like you're kind of right, actually. I mean, it's like smart people have figured this out and they realize that it's like, okay, well, yeah, we can create our own reality. We can choose what we want to create into being. We can do that by, you know, language and all that stuff. And so everything that I've said that goes for the positive also goes for the negative. 
You, they can, they, they can, you can weaponize all of this stuff. And why? Why would you do that? Because you're choosing to have control over people. And you're choosing to, you know, you're choosing to not accept the limitations of what we are as human beings and, and just, you know, buy into this, this mode of thinking, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, buy into this mode of thinking that, you know, the more that you create, the more that you buy, the more that you have, the more that you exist. And that's just not true. We don't have to behave in that way. So, you know, I started off this podcast by talking about that I wanted to get into some personal stuff. And, you know, I've kind of talked about some uh, some other things. And uh, I think I'll, I'll start getting into that personal stuff uh, right now. Um, before I do, I just want to take a second to think if there's anything else that I want to add to, uh, to what I was just talking about. Um, I'm checking my notes here and, and I see that I, I said that, uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, everything is, everything is tied into this. Um, and I really like the work that Chris Ryan does, uh, author of uh, Sex at Dawn and uh, Civilized to Death, if it ever comes out. Uh, I know he's been working on it for a while, but should be out soon. I'm looking forward to that. And he's got a great podcast I'll plug on this show called Tangentially Speaking. It's a great podcast. Um, good storyteller and uh, just a, a, a pretty awesome dude. I mean, the way that that guy lives his life and has lived his life is uh, is pretty rad. And um, you know he's creating some cool stuff and he's putting some cool ideas out there and and that's making life seem more enjoyable because of the understanding that you get after reading his things and and listening to him and stuff so you know there's um you know i think that the podcast uh thing going on is really uh is really powerful you know um I'm just really grateful that I get to sit in front of a microphone like this and talk and you guys listen and, 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 and you like it and you enjoy it and, you know, you talk about it and stuff. So, you know, it's, we're all participants in this conversation of, of creating truth and, um, and improving reality and improving our human experience. Um, so yeah, so that first part of the show, I guess, was, was, uh, about, uh, some important things that I thought are necessary in kind of establishing the conversation that that I want to have and that is that you know I um I've told some stories on this show about kind of like my my journey or my path whatever my experience you know my life and I think that um you know I did that four part ayahuasca series and I and I really, you know, I described on that on that ayahuasca series, the storytelling series back in my in my archives, probably like the 10th or 11th episode or something of this podcast. And I talked about how, you know, what led me to go and do and and you know, what led me to go um drink ayahuasca in the jungle in Peru and what led me to do that is a large part of it was that uh I felt that there were some things maybe that were out of my control and I was suffering and I didn't really know why. Um, and, you know, I, I had always been kind of angry and resentful, you know, aspects of me definitely. And, and growing up as a, as a teen. And of course there's, there's lots of reasons for that, you know, but I used to really blame those reasons a lot. I mean, you know, and I, and that's, and that's really, and, and some of those reasons are, you know, just being, have, being a human being and having to accept this world for what it is, you know, ha- having to accept the, uh, you know, being a, a newborn child, you know, coming to this world, seeing it with, with fresh eyes and interpreting it with a fresh brain and just the joy and the wonder and the mystery and the magic that a child experiences and they, they play and they're, they, they are just, they have no inhibitions and they, they, it's all these learned things that happen that make people insecure and shameful and scared and afraid and angry and bitter. It's all these learned things. But when the 
when children are born into the world, they're just so, you know, they're just bursting with that joy. And I, that's why people love kids. That's why people love babies and, and like holding them. And, you know, like I have a brand new niece and she's just like, she's awesome. Like I just sit there, I look at her and she's just looking at me with these big, you know, blue eyes and she's looking around and she's just like, what is this place? Like, this is crazy. You know, she's figuring everything out. She's making noises and she's smiling and it feels good because it's like, wow, like that's so cool. Like a new one of us, like you're going to love this place, you know? Like, we got a lot of good stuff here. Like, you know, welcome to the party, kid. And that's really what we should be doing. You know, our, the old, the, the generations that usher in the new generation should really be, like, gracious, like, party guests. And, like, hey, like, this is a dope-ass party we got here. We're going to throw, like, the ultimate, you know, you're going to, like, the best music festival in town, buddy. Like, you know, you're coming to the festival of life. This is, you know, the experience. This is going to be, this is going to be fucking bonkers for you, kid. You know? And so that's that's so cool that they have this like this 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 newness and and well, another reason why psychedelics are great is because you know and especially I feel this way on mushrooms is that you can really gain that kind of um you can gain that kind of vision and you can feel that way again you know it's it's possible it's possible to inhabit the mind of a child to have all those walls and all those barriers, you know, broken down and everything is just kind of new and refreshing and light and bright and beautiful and, and new ideas come, come to, uh, come to you. And, and, you know, because your, your brain is just so open, connected and different areas are firing that are, are, have never been connected before. And they're, they're dancing with each other now and they're talking with each other and they're, they're like, oh, what, what are you all about? And they're having that free and open dialogue, that free and open discussion, you know, the, on a micro level inside of us. There's the, the psychedelics are like the key to unlocking that group chat, that debate inside of our body, inside of our mind, inside of our organs, you know, there are our brains talking to each other saying different things, communicating, learning different things. Oh, I didn't know what it was like over there on the left side of the brain. Oh, sick. What's it like over here on the right side? Oh, how's that at the hippocampus? What's going on down there? You know, just whatever, whatever the dance is doing, it's doing it. And, and, and it's, it's connecting us more. And it's, we're understanding ourselves. And when we understand ourselves, we have a better understanding of each other. And when we gain that understanding, we talk about it. And, you know, that helps improve the situation. So, you know, when, when I came into the world, you know, I, I, I was a very, I just want to do my, you know, do my thing, do things my way. I don't, I don't understand what the hell this is all about. What the fuck is, what the, fuck, what the fuck's going on here? What are you telling me? I have to go to this building where some asshole stands in front of a bunch of rows and a desk. I want to be outside. Fuck is this? Don't tell me there's a need for this or anything like that. I don't want to do this. <laughs> it's my life. Right? Like I'm a I'm a being, like I'm a born, I'm here. Like I don't want to part I know what I want, what I don't want. <laughs> I know what sucks and what's good. I know what feels good and what's not good. So why should we do anything that's shitty or that could be done better? And so I just hated it, you know, I hated, I hated, you know, having to go to school and I hated having to, you know, do things that I didn't care about and just, it just seems like the biggest violation, the biggest rape of time ever. Uh, who are you to tell me what I need to do and what I need to care about, you know? I'm a free and independent being. Uh, I don't have to conform to 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 this shitty version of this is the best you can do this is your game this is it this sucks and that was my attitude and so i didn't give a shit i didn't i you know i didn't have a good uh family home life either you know my parents fought all the time and stuff so you know i i didn't really i was always leaving home and escaping home and you know they thought i was just you know and 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 i was smoking weed and drinking and just you know doing ecstasy at like 15 and 
all you know just anything just to just to cope with the pain that I felt of just you know being born into the situation that I was born into you know authority school rules regulations you know just kind of like I said like you know I'm showing up to uh to a party and I'm like this party sucks and you know I think I could do better <laughs> I thought I was like I could do better but I I didn't engage in any really productive activities because I was angry and I was in pain and I was hurting because I had a bad family life and you know I didn't like school and so I you know I did things I I was like you know I just acted out I just did whatever I wanted like I I wouldn't even say I was a class clown because a lot of stuff I did wasn't funny it was just disrespectful and like mean <laughs> but I but I just did it I just didn't give a fuck I was just kind of known as I guess maybe the guy who just didn't give a fuck the guy that would say anything do anything and uh you know so people didn't know what to do with me you know they're like oh we don't know to do this guy you know Oh, there's a you know we don't we don't live in a society where there's wise uh, old elders that uh, are living in truth, in the truest connection of their being, and in connected with uh, nature and the cosmos and the mystical and the unknown and the infinite and the in the multitudes of of reality and the connection to the, the plants and that we don't live in a society like that. We're not connected to the earth. We're not connected to shit. Shut up. Go to school. <laughs> so you know, uh, you know, I was like just pissed and so I was angry all the time and I would, I would like to get enough I did anything to just try and feel something you know just try and get it I would get into fights I would, I would do stuff just because it was crazy and just why not fuck it you know just be that guy and so they were like all right this guy needs to this kid needs to take Adderall you know just give him Adderall you know and of course you know I, I think I talked about this I started you know abusing it and snorting it and stuff and uh but so I've talked about this on the podcast before, but I'll just I'll just cut to the chase. Like I I I just you know I oh I should another crucial point that I should make is this. <clears throat> While all this is going on, I should I should you know talk about one of the most important points of the story. I have been had been living in fear uh of like you know, my uncle uh, had has big time problems, um, and it runs in the family. My father's mother was, uh, or my my sorry, my father's mother's brother, my dad's uncle, uh, like had to have a lobotomy. You know, like back in the day, because he they I think was bipolar, or schizophrenic, schizophrenic I think, and um, my my uncle became. Uh, you know, that happened to him. And it was always kind of like kept a secret and we didn't really know. And I don't want to go too much into it because it's kind of private and they're kind of private people and they would not necessarily want me to go fully in the, into the details of that. So out of respect of them, I, I won't. But um, it, it was, you know, a big deal. And it was like, you know, oh, I hope, you know, I hope our son, does, I hope it doesn't, that doesn't happen to one of our children. You know, uh, my parents would you know, be like, oh, you know, it's just, they were just worried parents. So, you know, concerned, but they didn't realize that they were projecting this fear onto me, you know? And, um, my, you know, it also runs on my mother's side as well. So, she, you know, she comes from a family where, you know, her, her mother suffered from, uh, a great depression, uh, in her, her whole life, you know, almost maybe something like a bipolar or something. I don't know if the, they necessarily, went to diagnose these things back then but you know that's 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 why I'm talking about this right now because there's you know there's people that have serious problems of the mind problems mental problems um that can't really you know it's it Psychedelics are great, you know, they really are. But if you're someone that has, you know, if you're someone that has mental issues and, um, you know, things like that, it's, uh, you really need to be careful because 
they can maybe have some bad effects. And, you know, they're, I definitely just want to, you know, say right now that I do not recommend anybody um, do any psychedelics that uh, if you're maybe worried that you might have something like a bipolar or a schizophrenia or something like that, I would, you know, talk to somebody who's a professional who's in that field and, and see what they would say about that. I, I would not advocate doing that. I know that um, people that uh, go down to drink ayahuasca, it's, you know, recommended that you do not, uh, uh, that you're not of that mental state and, you know, that you're not also, that you're not taking any kind of SSRIs or medications like that, you know, that you're completely off that stuff because there could be bad effects that happen. So be careful with that. And, you know, with that being said, it's like, you know, I talk about, I talk about psychedelics a lot on this show and, and how, and the benefit they can do for you. But, you know, I, I really don't do a, a good enough job of addressing maybe some of the, the negatives that they can do. Okay. But with that being said, I'll, I'll get back to what I was talking about, about how, you know, this story of just like my upbringing. And so this world that I was living in and, um, you know, so there's, there's this kind of, I guess, fear in me of, you know, oh, I hope I don't wind up like that, you know, so I was always kind of aware of like things that I did, you know, I, I, I had this like, oh, I always had this awareness of like myself, like this really like critical like judge because I would always evaluate everything with like, wait, did that seem crazy? Was that crazy? You know, because I don't want to be crazy like my, my crazy, uh, relatives, you know, and, um, and that, that was a fear that was projected on me. So it was always like, make sure you're not crazy. You know, it was like, so it's like, Hey, make sure, you know, every day someone comes in your room. I mean, this didn't happen. I'm exaggerating, but it's just like, if every day someone came in your room, it was like, just remember, don't be crazy. Uh, you can't go crazy. Don't go crazy. Don't lose your mind. You don't want to end up like this person. You don't want to end up like that person. You know, you would probably go crazy from that. Right. You know, like there's an old saying that's like, if you put somebody in a mental hospital, uh, they're likely to go crazy in the mental hospital just from being in there, you know. And there was this experiment, I forgot it was done, but they, this professor told his students to check into a mental hospital and see if they can talk their way out, and none of them could. And he, like, went back and picked them up, like, three days later or something like that. What a badass science experiment. I want to I get involved in stuff like that. That's fucking cool. Um, I mean, cruel and, and cool. But... Interesting. Just interesting because it shows the human psyche, like what we determine, how we determine who's sane and who's not and what crazy is and what does that even mean? You know, I mean, the shamans in the in the in the Amazon have a completely different view of mental health and mental illness and crazy. You know, somebody who's going through what would be like a schizophrenic crack up, you know, they're they're seen to be somebody who can walk between worlds, who can, you know, if they can harness that power and go through the experience, that they can benefit the community because they have something to say. They have something to offer. They have seen the other side. They have brought back knowledge. They have some wisdom to impart if only they would listen. And, you know, we're, we're like, uh, we're living on the planet Tatooine in Star Wars. Like, we don't identify the Jedi here. You know, in the West, we don't acknowledge that existence of the shamanic uh, states, the ayahuasca states, the the psychedelic realms, the spirits, the energy. We don't, in our mainstream society, we don't even acknowledge anything like that. That's, you know, talk, bring that up on CNN. You'll have the news reporter will break her face like, oh, excuse me. Oh, well, well, we're not talking about drugs here, you know, <laughs> something like that. It's one of these crazy insane like weird fucking can't believe there are human being people that inhabit the mainstream um so so that was always an awareness uh for me like all right you know but it was it's kind of good i'm glad i developed that awareness because i was it made me very perceptive very perceptive of human behavior, very perceptive of my thoughts, other people's thoughts, what people said, how they spoke, their body language and stuff. And I think that's what made me good at sales was really being able to really just understand people, get in there, you know, tech, different kinds of ways of making people feel comfortable and, and, and then eventually making the sale. So, you know, but I hated it. I mean, it's just, nah, it really wasn't for me. 
Um, you know, because there's a lot of kind of pretending and schmoozing and ass kissing and stuff like that. And I, 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 I don't care about that. That's not authentic, man. You know, it's not authentic. It's not, you know, what are we doing here? You're fucking selling peanuts. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I grew up with this and, and, you know, all through, you know, I, I, I've, I've had these, um, you know, experiences, experiences with sexuality, experiences with mental health, experiences with drugs, experiences with alcohol, experiences with, um, you know, uh, just d- traveling and um, studying and learning and sharing and just all, all these things that we, we go through as human beings and, n- you know, not necessarily having the confidence or the faith to communicate everything that was going on at the time because the society that I looked at looked like it didn't accept those forms of communication. And so, you know, it, it, the, the, my reporting of my true human experience didn't get served into the, into the, in, out there, you know, for other people to hear and say, and so, so I just, kind of, you know, I just lived like more of like a version of me than actually being me, you know? And like I said, I think that's what made me good at sales, you know? It was just I was able to play different roles, able to kind of just analyze the situation and be perceptive about it because I, I developed that perception from having that awareness, from that fear of, of trying to, you know, be, make sure that I'm not crazy. And being able to then use that to um, try and like get, just be good in, in whatever situation I need to be good in. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean like great or whatever, but just, just trying to just get along wherever I go. And I think that's, you know, it's definitely a good skill to have. But there, But it's also, there's also something weird about it because it's also like, you're kind of adapting to the the different situations in a way that's more geared towards favoring the the people's judgments of the new situations you come into rather than bringing a fresh new totally different perspective of your own situation and and i think uh you know i think that you're doing a disservice to yourself and to others by doing that but i didn't realize it you know i was just angry and stuff and and then i noticed like somewhere you know, like sometime in college maybe that like I had this, I didn't, like I just didn't even know what it was, you know, I just, just kind of felt shitty and lazy and just didn't really care about stuff. (laughs) And, you know, that kind of, little did I know that was the beginning of like my depression. And so that kind of like evolved, like every year it would get a little bit worse and a little bit worse and a little bit worse. And it would last instead of two weeks and instead of a month, it would last three months Then it would last four months. And you know, this past year, it's lasted the entire year. And, you know, I don't know if um, you guys are necessarily aware of this because I haven't really communicated it on the show as much. And uh, I, you know, cause I, I'm the Mike Adelic psychedelic podcast guy and like I talk to interesting people and you know and I'm like hey guys thanks for tuning in and thanks for listening to the show and let's get into something today like how could let's talk about this and that and and I haven't necessarily been so open and honest about just how fucking miserable of, of an experience I've been having this past year and just how much I felt like I've been living in hell and um you know I've had suicidal thoughts and um have felt really hopeless and felt in despair and have felt disconnected and lonely and um afraid and uh n- not like not a man and like not like a uh, what i used to be and you know uh i i you know lived this life of this kind of like macho tough guy and you know one of my old friends always says what happened to you You used to be the man 2002 you know king of the high school whatever you know like I mean yeah I mean it was cool it was fun but I was just a completely different person none of you would want to have anything to do with me back then and I was just what I would call an unconscious version of myself 
angry and bitter and just, you know, a dick, you know, didn't have any compassion or empathy really so much. And, but, you know, and then, and then, you know, as, as I got older, I kind of, I don't know, came online a little bit more and evolved a little bit more. And I think, you know, when I first took LSD, it really catapulted me to a whole nother level of awakening and a whole nother level of consciousness for myself. You know, it kind of like, it really, it like really brought like the, almost like the real me out, you know, because this whole other version of me, I was playing because I was, I was trying not to get hurt. I was trying not to be in pain. I was, I, like I said, you know, I mean, I think that it, there's, there's something to really be said about the fact that, you know, with the, when, where people grow up and their, their home life and their parents and their family situation. I mean, that's the introduction to existence and relationships and, and everything. And so, you know, that's why people go to fucking therapy. That's why I'm in therapy right now. Because of the shit that was done to us when we were younger. You know, the, 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 that has shaped our views and, and has shaped our identities. And uh, I love the work of uh, Gabor Mate. Uh, God damn, did I just pronounce his name wrong? Gabor Mate. Uh, I know I'm going to get some shit from that from, from someone because it's, I don't think it's the correct way to pronounce his name, but it's Gabor Mate. There you go. Um, the work of, of him, and he, he talks about how we develop all these coping mechanisms, you know, because, you know, we live in this, this, this toxic culture and, you know, we... we, we we have all these things that happen to us, and so we, we develop these coping mechanisms, and they manifest in all these different ways, and some of them are addiction, and some of them are food, some of them are whatever, you know, and but we treat the, the, for example, like the drug addicts, instead of treating them with compassion and care and empathy and help and love and respect and dignity we 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 shackle them up and we throw them in cages and we demonize them and we shame them and we shame sex workers and we shame porn stars and we shame you know drug users and we shame you know psychedelic people and we shame you know woo woo wee spiritual people and we shame you know indigenous cultures and tribes and you know things that are that are just you know out of our realm of uh, understanding and we just we, we 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 yell we force them down we try and shut down free speech we try and you know prevent free thought we manipulate each other we con each other you know we do all these things and <clears throat> and it, it, it's it it can just be it can be rough it can be a rough journey it can be a rough battle and you know when somebody breaks their arm and they're injured. Everybody can see that. They're injured. They broke their arm. They went to the doctor. The doctor says, you got a broken arm. Come home. Tell their friends, family, you got a broken arm. They got a cast. People sign the cast. Oh, yeah, I hope you get better. I hope you feel well. But if you have a broken mind, it seems like the, the main solution is just kind of, all right, we'll just tough it up. Get back in the game. Don't think about, you know, just this kind of just muster, muster up this willpower to just kind of dominate and supersede and overcome. And it's like, yeah, that might work for some people, but for a lot of people, their situations are fucking heavy. And it's real serious. And, you know, manning up and toughening up and, 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 and all that is just not going to cut it. Because I, I know, because, you know, this is something that I've battled my whole life. And I think it's, something that I just really want to be a part of the conversation on and shedding light on and, and um, talking about because it's so important, you know. And I'm undiagnosed, you know. I'm undiagnosed. I don't, I don't know I've, for sure. But, you know, I read an article the other day about how Pete Davidson had been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And I read some of the traits and characteristics and stuff. And, you know, I, 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 I've read some of the things he said, and he said that, you know, this past year has been the worst year of his life, and he's been struggling and depressed and just felt miserable, and I just it immediately connected with that. And, you know, to, just to come full circle on this whole thing, I guess maybe if Pete, D Pete Davidson never opened up about that and said that, it never would have triggered me to think these things and, and to talk about this right now. So, you know, I got to give a shout out to Pete Davidson for bringing that up, and, you know, thank you. You know, thanks for talking about it and being open about it because it's a real thing. You know, uh, someone gets hurt on your fantasy team. You got to figure out, you got to sit them. You know, it's, 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 he's not playing that game. 
someone gets hurt in, in, with their mind, with, you know, they're having trouble with their experience, they have an issue, they have a problem. It's not something to be ashamed of. It's not our fault. It's not our fault. It's, I mean, you know, we can blame our circumstances. We can blame our situation. We can live with anger and resentment and hostility and frustration and anxiety. And we can let it get the best of us. And it's easy to do that because it, it does get us. You know, it, it, it has pulled me down so many times in my life, especially when things are going great. Things are going great. Things are going good. And all of a sudden, this dark black cloud, this pit just sucks me down and just puts the KO on me, pins me. And it's horrifying. It's horrible. I never want to feel like that ever again. I'm, 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 I'm at a point where I'm just, I'm really sick of it, you know? And uh, it's something, you know, it's because I'm stubborn and I have an ego that I, it, it's taken me a long time to really admit that you know i really do have a crippling problem this problem of this depression that comes on and this darkness that comes on and it drags me down into this nihilistic world where nothing ha- means anything and there's no purpose and there's no reason for being here and being alive and there's no you know the, there's just everything is fucked there's no way out no one cares no one's paying attention i don't deserve anything i i you know blaming myself for things i was a dick i should have never said that if i only did this then this would have happened you know trying to change past situations because of poor decisions that i've made you know things that have happened but you know if you if i look back it's it's a pattern and it's affected every area of my life my relationships my jobs my relationships with friends family um it's caused suffering and and it's caused pain and i've been uh i've i've lashed out many times to many people and said things that i totally regret and did things that i regret and it's just it's absolutely horrible because that person then goes away and then this new person comes out and then i'm like how i am now and i'm just like life is awesome and i love being alive and Everything is great, and I love my friends, and yeah, this might suck, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's worth it, and I have a mission and a purpose, and I have a clarity of vision. This this fog has gone away, and I have a clarity of vision, a clarity of, I, I know what my my purpose is. I know why I'm here, and I'm glad to be here, and there's so much richness in life, and everything really is just, I just want to soak it all in, and I want to do everything, and say everything, and be everything, and it's just this, this, this great amazing feeling you know not like this ecstatic state of ecstasy but it's just this this feeling that you sh- that we should have like this no- this feeling that i would imagine that most people would have most people don't get crushed by the weight of daily tasks and normal kind of goings on and you know i like i said i can blame the whole thing on this apparatus that we call civilization I could blame the whole thing on that and just say, well, this is all fucked. And, uh, you know, so I'm just not going to participate and I'm going to say fuck you to everybody. And I'm going to be this kind of like angsty, like anarchist, you know, asshole. And I don't want to be that. You know, I don't want to be an asshole. But I I realize that um, it's out of my control. I feel like I've done everything that I, I've tried and done everything and, uh, you know, meditation, breath work, you know, reading, planning, scheduling, uh, setting goals, tasks, you know, I've, I've read it all. I've, I've tried it all. I've done it all. And it, it works for a while. And then I just get sucked back down again. And I like, become this other person and, and, and I don't have the clarity of thought that I have now. And I just, I feel like I'm I'm so convinced and I speak with such conviction about the state of my reality and how I see it during those states that it manifests and it becomes true. And I just don't want to go through this anymore and um you know uh it's It's easy to recognize this and to say, okay, I will make a choice and I will not do this anymore, but 
I think this come this is more about this is more than just a choice. It's it's about I mean everything it has to be a choice because I have right like I have to be willing to admit that I need to do whatever I can to help myself and try and seek out all kinds of help that I can to try and you know get my life in order and not be crushed by the weight of our you know the the predicament of the civilization that we live in that I feel is kind of crushing my soul um because in a way it is and and I and I talked about that a lot before about how you know the sicknesses and the disease, disease and the manifest and the pain and the coping mechanisms and the trauma and all that stuff and it's and it it is real um some people are just wired differently where they can handle it and adapt to it better and you know I think that as a man it's been very difficult for me to admit that like maybe I'm not wired that way maybe I'm not you know, quote unquote, tough enough to man up and just to get it done because I can't, because it's, I need help. I need to go see a therapist. I need to, you know, I need to be engaging in, 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 uh, the activities that make me feel more alive and exercising more regularly and eating a healthier diet and, doing all those things that that I that are in my power to do and you know getting professional level help if that's what it requires you know I'm willing to do that now I'm willing to go there and I think that um you know maybe you know I just wanted to talk about this because you know it's 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 something that I feel is really really important and I think a lot of people don't may may not realize that they have something going on that might be out of their control because it's scary to admit that and that's why I've been so hesitant to to admit that I mean I've talked on the podcast before about you know depression and this and that and stuff but I I never really had the realization that I had now that it was completely out of my control um and that 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 has taken a very long time for me to admit and uh it's, you know, it's definitely scary. It's definitely tough. It's, you know, it's, it's definitely, um, for me, it, it, it always seemed like frightening to admit that, like there's, there's something going on that I just don't really know. And I don't know how to deal with, and I can't get a hold of because I, I feel that I could get a hold of anything. And I've been that way my whole life. And I think that this insurmountable weight of not being able to get a hold of it has been crushing me and has been uh, manifesting itself by ruining things in my life because I refuse to put the lid on it. I refuse to kind of get a hold of it. And um, I choose to indulge in that dark path, that dark side, you know, that, that dark, nihilistic, meaningless, hopeless, resentful, angry, bitter feeling where you know people are stupid and all this stuff and the stuff that Jordan Peterson talks about you know those kinds of people that go down that path of feeling that life is meaningless and it and there's no purpose and you know it's it's that that anger and that bitterness and that resentment that mo- makes you want to take revenge on humanity because you feel like you've been fucked over you've been screwed they got you you know and and it's all fucked so we might as well just blow it all up and that's why you get people like, you know, Hitlers and, and you know, people like tyrants and, and dictators and all this kinds of, uh, kind of thing and things that we're seeing here in America. You know, just the, 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 we, are a, a, we are an empire built on war and domination and just, you know, just terrible stuff. But it's just, it's just you know, much like I guess what's happening, what, what has happened with my life has been like a microcosm of what is what is going on in the world. You know, I'm in debt, the US government's in debt. <laughs> you know, like where there's wars, like I'm I'm at war too. Like, you know, there's going through you know, tough time where we're everyone's arguing about race and gender and politics and we're screaming at each other and yelling at each other. And it's like, all right, yeah, I'm screaming at myself and yelling at myself. Yeah, there you go. So it's okay to admit that we are going through tough times 
And especially, I just want to talk to like all the guys out there. It's like, we're not supposed to, you know, there's things that, 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 that define us as being a man. You know, it's like, don't buy into that bullshit. You're a human being. Be a fucking human being first. Just be a human first. And, um, you know, it takes a lot of courage to, to talk about things that you don't necessarily hear a lot of people talking about. Um, and there's a certain kind of image that's projected in society of how a certain kind of person or a certain kind of set of people should be or should act or should do. You know, all this should, should, should. There is no should. There's only you and, and me and, and our experiences and what we make of it and what we choose to report and not report and what we choose to admit. You know, the more we report the stories of, of, of fake news from our human experience, the more that we're going to get a world that's fake and that doesn't serve us and that doesn't fit and that's not right. So we need to report the truth and we need to communicate with each other and we need to talk to each other about figuring out these problems. If a lot of people are out, are out there and, and are going through tough times and dark times and depressions and, you know, if they suffer from anxieties or, or fears or, um, you know, social uh, anxiety and all kinds of whatever it is, you know, I'm not smart enough to come up with all the, <laughs> with all the, I can't even come up with a word now. It's 3 a.m. here in New York. And I just decided like podcasting, so that's what I'm doing. But we can't, we can't do that. We do a disservice. And, you know, so year after year, you know, my depression, my, you know, whatever I want to, I don't know what I should call it. I guess I'll call it depression just for lack of a better word. The darkness um, would creep into my life and it would creep in and it would creep in and it would always come more around uh, for an extended period of time around the winter, of course, seasonal depression is a thing. It's like something that people are familiar with. Oh, it's shitty outside. So yeah, it's like, uh, of course I don't feel good. Makes sense. Um, but it, mine would be like double down, you know, and I just would feel paralyzed and incapacitated and just too afraid to admit that I needed help. And thought that I could do it all on my own. And, you know, that's definitely a part of my ego. And uh, that's def and definitely, you know, one of the parts, one of the downsides, I could say, of psychedelics is like, you know, when you're talking about it, it definitely can feed into some delusional or megalomaniac kind of ideas, you know, where you, you think that you're, you're getting rid of your ego, but all you're doing is actually gaining an ego because you're doing so much psychedelics all the time that you're going, you're going to these places and you're, and you're looking at everyone going, Heh, they don't know the truth. I know the truth. They don't even know what's going on out there. You know, it's like we all are, I think, guilty to that to some degree. You know, it's like, and if you have done as much as I have and, 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 and kind of, you know, I've gotten to that point where I'm just like, you know, I think that I, 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 like I, on my Twitter hand bio, I say, you know, my ego is so much smaller than yours. You know, I say that joking around because it's like, that's such a silly idea. It's like we're, I'm using psychedelics to try and dissolve my ego so I can be a more compassionate, loving, understanding, authentic human being. And in the process of doing that, I'm gaining a, a sneaky ego in there that's saying, yeah, look at how much information you're gaining. Look at how much wisdom you're gaining. Look at how much, you know, look at how how much you're learning, look at the dimensions you're going to, and all these other people, they're scum, they're not, they don't know, you know, and it's like this, so it's crazy, it's like, oh, I have, I, I, I have no ego whatsoever, my ego is gone, I just don't have any ego whatsoever, there's no ego here, no ego, absolutely no ego, zero ego, and someone else is like, yeah, me too, and you're like, yeah, but mine's, but I have less, I have less ego, I just want to make that clear that like, my ego is actually smaller, way smaller than yours, okay? <laughs> and it's just a silly concept, but, you know, there, there's, these are all traps um, to, that we, we can fall into uh, along the path. So it's like, you know, I, I, I'm guilty of this because 
you know, in, with a combination of this kind of depression and the feelings of being, you know, cynical and, and nihilistic and everything's meaningless and just being resentful and angry, you know, that that has led me to feed into my ego more and to think that I know everything and I have the answers and that, you know, yeah, it's of course, you know, all we need is just liberty and psychedelics, you know. <laughs> It is way more complex than that, folks. Um, and, you know, when you go down, it's, it's, it's something, it's funny. It's like when, when you go down these rabbit holes of information and you start opening one door and you've explored this whole room that this door has to, to offer, you go, wow, like, that's incredible. Like, I, I, I can't believe that there was all this knowledge. Like, when I, after I graduated college, you know, I, I, my, the first time I read a libertarian book, I didn't even know what libertarians, I was like, oh yeah, I think the guys from South Park are libertarian or like Dennis Leary might, might have identified as me, but I don't know, uh, what is that like, oh, you're in the middle? So I didn't know anything about it, so it's like, I just got out of like, you know, what, I don't know, 18 years of school or whatever, and, you're, uh, and your mind is getting blown by some stuff that you just didn't even know existed. And then I discovered that there's a whole realm of these people, and there's professionals, and there's there's academic. You know, it's like what there's all where where was all this? I didn't know about this. And so then you go down that hole, and then you know maybe it leads you to another one, and, and all this kind of stuff. So you know, and at the same for me, it was really that's exactly what was happening. I was learning all of this stuff about libertarian thought and philosophy, and and history and uh, alternative history and stuff, and then. You know, then I was at the same time learning about spirituality and psychedelics and everything, and it's just like these kind of like different worlds, these, these, these nodes of perspective, these nodes of of gatherings of human consciousness who are working together to conspire to create a reality that thinks that it offers the most truth into the world to make it a better place. Jesus Christ, somebody fucking cut that because I felt like that was good. <laughs> and I don't know what the hell, I'd, I'll never remember what I say. Um, but that is essentially what's happening. So you have, you know, it's like we can shout people down and say that they're wrong or whatever, but that's the whole part of the battle is to see what ideas rise to the top, which ones are good. And they all come from these different, like, perspectives that we need. We need all these perspectives. We need more perspectives. We need more freedom more freedom of thought, more freedom of speech, and we'll get more perspectives. And out of those more perspectives, we'll get more ideas. And out of more ideas, those ideas will battle those ideas, and then the good ones will rise to the top. And then we'll be able to progress a little bit, you know, we'll get the ball down the field another inch at a time, an inch at a time. That's what it takes. That's, that's the kind of, you know, like time vault or whatever period that we're living in these like you know 10,000 year epochs or whatever you know it's like these massive junk hunks of time and we're handing the baton off in this relay race with ourselves you know to to the next generation and so you know because I and I and I guess I'm you know kind of like apologizing in a, in a way because I'm also thinking about like a lot of things I've said and a lot of things I've said with conviction and just kind of you know, knowing that there's so much that I don't know and that, you know, but, but, but in the investigation of the unknown, I've, I, I felt like, and I feel like maybe people can relate to this is like, we get to a point where we go oh Yep. I know. I know what it is. I know what's going on here. I got to figure it out. And there, and there's always that kind of feeling at least that I get where I feel like I have, I have reached the answer. I have found the truth. I have come to the, I have, entered into the, I've opened the door into the realm of thinkers and thoughts that I, that are illuminating the way these guys are right. These guys are wrong. And that's not true. It's not true. It's not true that these guys are right. And these guys are wrong. Everybody's right. And everybody's wrong. And that's the truth. And to, to know that is just like, it's, it's like, what are you stupid? Like, how could everything be true and false? Well, it is. We exist and we don't. It's it, it cause, because it's because it's that complex. Because this experience machine is that complex. Like this is the highest level game that you could play. N sixty four than this. So. So you know. This 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 debilitating, crippling, 
uncontrollable dark depression um has just beaten me down like one too many times and has led me to be arrogant and egotistical and angry and nihilistic and cynical and and you know and then it goes away and then i and then i realize oh my god what have i done you know and so and it's not like that drastic it's not like i'm dr jekyll mr hyde whatever you know like totally transforming into like another consciousness but i'm but it almost is and and it's like you know it's just this aspect of my personality and i believe that that aspect of my personality is valuable because but not to the extent in which it's run run rampant and and wrecked me in so many ways it's valuable in the sense that i'm glad almost that i have the perspective of somebody who has who has experienced suffering and despair and hopelessness and suicidal thoughts and 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 knowing what it feels like to inhabit that experience to go that way to th- have the to think that to feel that because i know because if it's happening to me it's happening to other people because we're all the same we're all the same thing and so in a way i'm almost sort of kind of grateful for the experience because it it allows me to then know what the depths are and how how to navigate through them by constantly fighting and battling and I'm ready willing and able to continue that fight and to notch it up and take take care of this thing so I can get it so I can minimize it because everybody's going to feel some some you know everybody's going to feel dark depressed sad you know you you can't just be perfectly uh I mean most of us can't be just perfectly okay with everything and and you know fully enlightened beings so so this is um this is something that uh that i i i want to talk about more and i feel it needs more attention and uh you know like i said i think for men in particular because i think it's something that you know we can really um help other men uh with you know by talking about this and opening up and just kind of you know sharing and 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 understanding what it what it's like to you know be have have the experiences that we have and then how we can make them better you know so we can improve you know it's like okay like what went what went wrong like let's make corrections like let's improve you know we we're, we're designing like a computer we're building a computer you know something fucks up it goes haywire it's like okay well you know we're not going to say like oh we're never going to build a computer again and smash it to pieces we're like okay how can we improve it how can we fix it what went wrong let's get some people in here maybe that are better than us that are more talented than us that can help us and assist us because we deserve that everybody deserves that everybody deserves to be happy and to have an opportunity and on top of that if you're born in this country and you are born of a middle class family and you have been given things and you have been given opportunities and you have been fed and you have been clothed and you have a roof over your head you have opportunities that other people would kill for they couldn't even dream of and it's good to keep that in perspective because it's our you know, it's like our duty to make sure that we use all of our talents, abilities, and skills, and knowledge, and uh, expression to the best that we can, because we have to do it for the people who can't, because it would be a, dis- it would be a slap in the face to those people who would give anything to have just a quarter of what any of us have, and like I said, you know, they're us too, living different lives. I hope that, uh, I hope that I can really improve and, and be better and be more, um, and be feeling good more and feeling confident more and feeling, uh, normal, I guess for lack of a better word, normal, steady, you know, less, um, 
being, you know, gripped by uh, just debilitating um, thing that just seems to be out of out of my control. So you know, like I said, I'm just gonna try and get as much help as I can get and and just do the absolute best I can. And you know, I I'm willing to do that because I I admit that I need I need to. Um, it's I can't just go at this alone. Um, so, you know, I talked about how, like, this past year had been really bad for me, and, you know, it was just a lot of laying around and not feeling good at all, feeling just terrible and in pain and just smoking cigarettes again and drinking and definitely abusing psychedelics, not really doing them in the right way and doing other drugs, you know, Coke and whatever. Um, and just not doing psychedelics with good intentions, you know. And, um, you know, and, and telling everyone to not do that, yet I'm doing it because I'm, once again, my ego is, I can handle it, right? <laughs> you can't handle it, but I can. Don't worry, I know what's going on. But I can't. Can't handle it. And uh, this is what happens, you know? This is what happens when you think that you can defy, for lack of a better word, God, for, you know, when you can defy the universe, defy reality, defy the limitations of your of your human meat sack and your your wiring and say, nah, I'm gonna do everything myself and I'm never gonna admit that I can't do it and, and stuff like that and uh kinda, you know, talk about it a little bit here and there, but don't really dive into it fully and you know I um running out of steam a little bit here, to be honest. Uh, this has been a long podcast, and I really appreciate you guys for listening to this whole thing. Maybe I should pick this up and continue um, with more uh, at a later date. But, you know, basically I just, um, I wanted to talk about mental health, what we what we consider to be mental health, and what we consider to be normal and what we accept as reality and what we agree upon as what experience should be like and how we should act and how we should behave and what we should think and what we should say and how we should live and what it all means. Some people seem to be okay with the way things are and some people are suffering, like me. crushed and suffering and f believing in the delusion that I can do something about it myself and not ask for help. Um, so don't worry about me, guys. I'm going to be just fine. I, uh, I've had this realization and I'm willing to talk about it and seek the best help that I can. And um, maybe I will do a, you know what, I'll, I'll keep this going for a little bit because I just want to, you know, I'll, I'll get into, I'll get into some things just because I don't want to, I don't want to leave, leave you guys worried, you know, thinking that uh, old Uncle Mikey over here is uh, going to go jump off a bridge. It's, um, <clears throat> you know, I've just, I've, I explained before about the situations and you know, the, the kind of perspective I had as a child and growing up and the bad family life and the attitudes that I had and the, the choices that I made. And those things add up, you know, and the, the, the fear of not, not wanting to be crazy and then, you know, actually getting the depression coming on in college and then getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more severe as, as time goes on and not knowing what to do about it and having it affect my my jobs and all these things and the the way that they've affected them is because I've become this other kind of bitter person and stuff and and so 
it's la- it's led me to make a lot of decisions in that space. I haven't been making decisions as this person that you're hearing right now is the person who is you know collected and rational and and has clarity of mind and thought and vision and has uh feels like he wants to be alive and has a purpose and a meaning and wants to do things and accomplish things and set goals and you know th- really just live forthrightly in the world and moral and right and just and true and so when i get into these states when i fall into this dark depression i just i act and i behave in this way that's just terrible for myself and and just nobody wants to be around me no one wants to be around me you don't want to be around someone who's just mean and bitter and angry and just like a prick and you know just abusive and crazy and violent you don't want to be around someone like that so you know so i make decisions when i'm in that headspace and those decisions impact the future. And so a lot of the decisions have just accumulated, you know, credit card debt, you know, student loans, um, just, you know, not saving enough money, just, you know, acting without respecting other people's feelings or, or things like that, just being inconsiderate or mean or... um disrespectful um just ma- making making decisions based upon like you know like louis ck has a joke about this actually i always liked it because i related to it he's like i i'm so lazy that i just if i was like had a job interview for a new job and i was tired i would just wouldn't wake up i'd just be like ah, i guess i'm just not being that thing <laughs> and i always love that i always love that because I was like yes that's literally how I live my life but living your life like that is insane like I just blow everything off my whole life that's how I've lived because I'm coping with this pain and I'm battling this depression that I can't acknowledge as being a depression and I'm not asking for help and I'm self-medicating and I'm abusing psychedelics and I'm abusing weed and I'm just doing things my own way without asking for any help or having respect for any other help that could be out there, you know, experts and people that have knowledge and could really actually shine a light and help me. And instead, I'm just telling everyone to go fuck off. Fuck authority and fuck everyone. And it just it just had made matters worse and worse and worse until it finally just all blew up in my face. Completely blew up. And uh I had to forfeit my apartment couldn't make my rent and it was just like the worst you know the worst shit just started happening and I just didn't know why and I blamed everything else except for really just looking at the past and my you know the what has happened so you know I don't, I used to feel always like right now, I mean, I just, I have more of a sense of understanding, acceptance and forgiveness and, you know, calmness and patience and, and I feel more true to who I am by telling you guys this, being really real with you and hoping that you will not unsubscribe. (laughs) Stay subscribed and donate to my Patreon. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, just taking a risk. You know, I took a risk when I decided to eat mushrooms and record myself saying just nonsense, you know. So I, I, I'm not, you know, and I, I say other things that are, are risky too, but they're recklessly risky. And that's the point. I've been living with this reckless abandon. And this this feeling that like everything's just gonna work out because it kinda always has, because like I said, I'm kinda good at analyzing and perceiving situations and so I can easily flow and adapt into changing circumstances and just do what I need to do to kinda get by and make it work and make it happen. And it's just been like this juggling act, you know, and like no, nah, like I got like I gotta like accept responsibility and like admit that I can't do everything. <laughs> I can't do everything. You know, 
when I'm in that mindset, I'm like, oh, what is this book? I can write a better book. I can write, I can make a better movie. This is crap. What is this? this is, I could do better than it. It's just this egotistical just craziness and disrespect. And it's like, you know, it's it's just it. those decisions that I've made have just accumulated and they all just got to the point where it's like now I'm drowning or I was drowning. Hopefully I'm getting out now. But this past year has been a year spent in the deep end. And I've been just battling and battling and I'm just like worn out right now because I just, I need to send a raven to get Khaleesi to fly in here with a fucking, where there are three dragons and help me because I, I can't do this shit by myself, you know. <laughs> Game of Thrones, guys. Game of Thrones. When I was depressed, I binge watched the entire seven seasons. Seven, uh, yeah, seven seasons. In like a week. All right, guys. I uh, I really appreciate you guys hanging on and listening to this long episode. You guys are everything to me, and uh, I I mean that. Uh, I really uh, appreciate the platform I have to talk like this and to communicate these things and talk about these important ideas, uh, at least that I feel are important. And so maybe I'll do another episode like this and kind of follow up if I ever think of maybe some more things that I wanted to add or say. But um, we got some great episodes coming out, some great guests, and uh, I'm going to be at the Horizons uh, Psychedelic Conference in New York, and I'm going to be attending the after party that Symposia is throwing. And um, they uh, they they do this every year. I actually... I actually was really, ter- again, terribly depressed last year and kind of forced myself to go. And then I just, I didn't go to the after party and I kind of regretted it afterwards, but I just kind of stayed home and like ordered pizza or something. And just, you know, just was too afraid to like go out and I don't know, just be in public and meet people and stuff. And I just felt too shitty at that time. Too much bad things had happened in my life. And I, I was still kind of recovering and it was just, it just, you know, anyway, but I'm going to be going to that this year and I'm psyched and I hope to see some people there and meet up with some people, some other fellow colleagues, I guess, of mine, other podcasters, writers, uh, people, uh, authors and uh, comedians and and whatnot. So I'm psyched for that. Um, So yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you guys got something out of it. And, you know, once again, you know, uh, you know, don't, don't, uh, feel bad for me or anything, you know, I'm, I'm going to be just fine. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, I'm just glad that I had the opportunity to communicate this to you. So with that uh, being said, you know, I appreciate that, uh, you would even take the time to listen to, to this kind of shit. Uh, so you guys rule and, um, I'll talk to you next time. Peace out. Lost my
Oh, 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 oh,